Warning, there are profanity, topics, and other opinions that could offend you. Please watch and or listen at your own risk, and enjoy the show. Hey guys, what's up, Zardek here, what's cool, do us to everyone to call me, welcome back to the Voidcast, where no topic is off the table. Um, so, yeah, so this episode, uh, obviously if you can't look at your calendar, or if you didn't look at your calendar, there's going to be two episodes this week, which I'm excited, because I love doing the bonus episode for you guys, but, um, so if you're not, if you're only a YouTube listener to the podcast, then definitely go out and check out Audio Boom. or if you have iTunes, or Google Play, you can check me on there, just search uh, old school Duelist 12 or the Voidcast. I can't remember which one you search up, but search up one of those two and you'll find it. One quick thing before we get into this, uh, uh, tell me about your week. Um, is uh, Final Fantasy 15 is on PC now, which I did not actually know. Like, my, I, I saw like an ad for it. And I thought it was like fake. <laughs> like, I legit thought it was like a fake thing. Um, so I didn't. Um, yeah, I didn't, oh, excuse me, I didn't, uh, I thought, it, yeah, like I said, I thought it was fake, so, <laughs> but, yeah, so, uh, what was I gonna say? I was gonna say some words, I totally forgot what I was doing, um, anyways, uh, I had to yell. Sorry, guys. I'm really tired right now. But obviously, as we always do in every episode, uh, we do the, uh, the tell me about we do the, the. Let's try that again. As we always do in every episode, we do the tell me about your week. And if you guys don't know what to tell me about your week is, if you go on Twitter, and you, if you at me on OS Duelist Twelve uh, with the hashtag tell me about your week, I will tell you or I will. You know, I'll read about your week, and you guys get to hear about my week. So if you want to tell me about your week, go ahead and tell me about your week uh, with the at hashtag Tom, or at OSDuelist12 with the hashtag Tom about your week. Um, and, uh, you know, you get to tell me about your week. We get to learn more about each other, and you get to tell me what you're doing with your life. Um, but my week this week was uh, was chill. It was really laid back. Um, I went, what did I do last week? Same basic stuff. Nothing really too crazy. Hi, my girlfriend, obviously. Um, helped a buddy out, helped my best friend out with some stuff. Um, I was going to go check out a card shop, um, but I did not catch the card shop. Um, I didn't catch it till Monday of the week of recording this, or the week that this episode comes out. But last week, I, uh, I didn't really, like I said, I didn't really do too much. Uh, I kind of stayed at home. Uh, Tom and my girlfriend played some games, so that's about it. That's legit my week. Like, that's, like, the shortest week I've ever been able to talk about. So, and I bet next week will be more interesting to talk about. So, because uh, I'm actually doing things this week. So, you'll learn about that next week. Uh, so, yeah, like I said, if you guys want to tell me about your week, go ahead and at me, at OSDuelist12 on Twitter. Um... And then you can tell me about your week. So, uh, yeah. So, and before we jump into the Overwatch news, um, the Overwatch League coverage for the week, we uh, we have. I just want to give a big shout out to Audio Boom for uh, all this, all the support that they do, and all the stuff they give me. Like I said, with I'm always like I always promote them. Like it's free promotion because I like Audio Boom. I love what they're doing. Um, their services are quite well, and I've yet to run into any problems with it. Um, and then, it, and any of the problems I had was just me being stupid. Um, so, <laughs> uh, so yeah. So, like I said, I have like if you like Audio Boom, and if you like, and you've always wanted to have a podcast, go ahead. You could put do a podcast on there. They give you a thirty day free trial. Like I said, I'm not sponsored. I'm just giving them some promotion. Uh, you get your first month free. Uh, for just signing up on Audio Boom, and uh, like I said, ten bucks a month is our lowest tier, and then it allows you to upload five episodes a month, uh, or five uploads a month. Um, plus, uh, you can it gives you 
the uh, the availability to post on any like any audio websites, iTunes, Google Play, Stitch Radio, um, Spotify, you know, TuneIn Radio, anything that you can upload uh, your podcast to, they have for the most part they have you're able to upload to that. So um, I'm like I'm all we have still waiting on my fucking Spotify to be to be approved. Like holy shit, that's really annoying. Um, but yeah, so that is it for that small little promotion thing. But moving on, we have Overwatch League coverage. Um, it is it was the week five of stage two, so it's the final week. Uh, Wednesday, March twenty first through Saturday, March twenty fourth. An interesting, interesting week. Um, I'd I'd have to say. Uh, we have the LA Gladiators. I have a train going by. Uh, we got the starting with Wednesday, March twenty first. We got the LA Gladiators versus the Philadelphia Fusion, and Philadelphia Fusion winning three to one. And then we got the Florida Mayhem versus the San Francisco Shock. Which this would be a shock to some people, but Florida Mayhem beat the San Francisco three to two. And then we got the Shanghai Dragons versus the Houston Outlaws to finish out that day with the Houston Outlaws beating the Shanghai Dragons for ten nothing. Uh, moving on to Thursday, March twenty second, we have the Houston Outlaws versus the Soul Dynasty. And holy shit, we have the Houston Outlaws beating Soul Dynasty three to one. Like Oh man, I, I I keep pushing for that. I really feel like Soul Dynasty is really starting to slip up, or you know they're slipping up, or everything like that. Um, and then we have uh, New York Excelsior versus the Dallas Fuel, with New York winning three to two. Uh, and then we have the San Francisco Shock versus the Boston Uprising, Boston winning three to two. Um, but yeah, that starts on March twenty second. Those those last three. I don't remember if I said it or not. I feel like I didn't. But moving on, we have Friday, March 23rd, with Soul Dynasty going against the Florida Mayhem, and Florida Mayhem losing. So we got Soul Dynasty. Yeah, you thought. You thought. Um, but we have Soul Dynasty beating Florida Mayhem 3-1. to one. And then moving on, we had Philadelphia Fusion versus Los Angeles Valiant. Uh, and we have Philadelphia beating Los Angeles Valiant 3-2. to two. Uh, And then we have the London Spitfire versus the Shanghai Dragons. Um, and London beating Shanghai four to nothing. Um, and then moving on, that was Friday, March twenty third. I think again, I forgot to say it. So that was March Friday, March twenty third, and then was Saturday, March twenty fourth, which was the big, the big day. Well, not the big day, honestly. Um, but we had the Dallas Fuel versus the London Spitfire, and the London Spitfire beat the Dallas three to one. I mean, then uh, another depressing game: the LA Valiant versus New York Excelsior, and it, New York beat Valiant four to nothing. Just with this stage, Valiant just getting shit on. Um, so yeah, that's very sad. Um, and then the Boston Uprising versus the LA Gladiators, with Boston beating the Gladiators three to two. And then we have actually we Sunday, March twenty fifth. Totally forgot about this day. Like I totally like I knew I had to talk about it, but I forgot about it. Um, but we had the the prize pool, the state the stage two title matches. I uh, was a prize pool of one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars. Um, there was two games: the Philadelphia Fusion versus the London Spitfire, and Philadelphia beat London, uh, three to two. And then the Philadelphia was against uh, New York Excelsior as well, and the uh, Philadelphia oh sorry Excelsior won three to two. So Philadelphia won and then lost. Um, so that's that's pretty that's actually pretty cool. So yeah, that is it for the Overwatch League coverage. And then with some Overwatch League news, which is also part of the news, uh, we have a new character was a uh, was introduced. It's not available in ranked, but currently she's available in quick play to play. Um, so and her name is Bridget. Um, just to give you like you know for the people that love lore like me, I love lore in video games. Um, we have uh, Bridget. She is Bridget Lindholm. That here's her real name, um, and then we her age is 23. She's Swedish, uh, and everything like that. Her uh, her affiliation is Reinhardt Wilhelm, um, with relations uh, and her relations are Turbjorn is her father. Turbjorn, Turbjorn and Ingrid are is, are her mo- her father and mother, um, with the Godfather being Reinhardt. So that did I say Wilhelm? I meant Lindholm. Turbjorn and Ingrid will are 
Lindholm is her mother and father, um, and her, and Reinhardt is her godfather. So, so that's pretty fucking cool. The voice actor of her is Matilda. And ex, excuse, pardon my if I fuck up her shit, but Matilda Smidis, Smidis, yeah. Her role is a support, and her uh, her health is two hundred with an armor of fifty. Um, so yeah, like I said, she is a support player. Um, but honestly, she's kind of like to me, she seems like a tank, uh, like a tank support in a way, um, because uh, she has a passive ability called Inspire. Which uh, it heals uh, it, it heals anyone around her within a 16 meter radius. Uh, heals 16 per second. Uh, and duration is five seconds. So if you do the math, it heals a little bit. Um, a cooldown is a uh, 1.5. So that actually goes by pretty like that. That's actually fucking shit. That's actually really useful. Her weapon is a rocket flail. Its melee damage is 35. A range of six meters and one. And the rate of fire is one sec. Oh no. One swing per per point six seconds, so uh, yeah, it's you can barely get two swings over us, like a little bit over. You can get two swings in a little bit over a second. Um, and an ability is, or her abilities are rock a repair pack, which is a, a healing of one hundred and fifty, uh, and also gives up to seventy five armor uh, over max health. Uh, projectile speed is 30 meters per second. Maximum range is 30 meters. Duration is five seconds, um, and cooldown is six seconds. So that you know takes a second, and it does. Uh, according to this, it does stack. Um, so yeah, and then uh, then she also has the whip shot, which is a linear uh, projectile. Does 70 damage. Projectile speed is 40 meters per second. Uh, maximum range is 20 meters. Cooldown is four seconds. Um, and then her, she has two more abilities. Uh, the barrier shield, which is uh, essentially the basis. Just sum it up. It is like a Reinhardt shield, only smaller. Um, the health is of the shield is 600. Um, the the shield healing it heals 100 shield per second after being down for two seconds so once it's no once it's not active for two seconds it will heal 100 per second um the movement speed uh is three uh three point eighty five meters per second um the cooldown is three seconds after it's been broken so once the shield health is gone you wait three seconds and it will come back um and it always like it works the same as like the reinhardt shield so um if you move your mouse it's going to move the shield with you um, and then also she has her last ability is a shield bash. It's not her ult. Don't worry, guys. It's a shield bash. It does 50 damage. Maximum range is 6 meters. Duration is 1 second stun. Um, so it's like Reinhardt's and the cooldown is 5 seconds. Doesn't do as much damage as Reinhardt's shield, but essentially it's the same thing. Um, yeah, so it's, yeah. Um... And then her ultimate, her ult, her ultimate ability uh, is called a rally. A uh, health, it, the health is thirty armor per second, up to one hundred and fifty armor. So that gives you thirty armor per second. Um, and uh, the area effect is eight meters. Duration is ten seconds, and charge or charge requirement is twenty two seventy five, two thousand seven hundred or two thousand two hundred and seventy five. The rally cannot be disabled by Symmetra's hack, uh, as well as um, the uh, the Inspire passive ability uh, that cannot be affected by uh, uh, Symmetra's hack. So that's the character. Uh, she is. Currently, only in quick play right now. She's not in rank, but uh, she seems interesting to me. Um, I like I said to me, she seems like uh, uh, like a tank, like a like a uh, like a support tank. So like, yeah, to me, like I said, to me, she seems like a mini, a smaller version of Reinhardt uh, uh, that doesn't deal as much damage, but also does a lot of healing. So that's pretty fucking cool healing. So that's what, that's actually kind of cool. Like she has like the small aspects of Reinhardt, her godfather, and then also can throw out armor and like is armor based stuff like Turbiern. So that is it for her. Moving on to the other news thing I wanted to talk about is the ha- the World Video Game Hall of Fame 2018. Um, those going on right now. Um, well, not like right right now, but as of right now, we have our finalists. 
And I'm honestly, when I'm, when I'm naming off these finalists, um, I might talk a bit about them just so you guys know. But we got Asteroids, which is Asteroids released by Atari. And this comes from CBS uh, yeah, CBS News, this, uh, what, this article that I'm reading it off. Um, but we have the Asteroids released by Atari in 1979. The game sold more than 70,000 arcade units, millions more play in an, uh, uh, more played it at home uh, on Atari 2600. Uh, I played a little bit of Asteroids, which was actually kind of cool. Um, so that's that's actually really interesting. Um, I kind of want to look at the photos real quick. Uh, like I'm I'm just gonna open this up. I want to see what uh like what what is the fuck. I don't think the fuck these are n like not even oh, I'm so upset right now they're just kind of like I'm upset oh that's the 2017 finalist oh okay this list is the 20 man get the fuck out of here uh but anyways uh moving on um so yeah and then the next one is Call of Duty uh the first person shooter game drops players into a World War II setting um for a blend of action and historic narrative. Launched by Infinity Ward slash Activision, um, the game and sequels have sold more than 260 million units since 2003. I have grew up playing Call of Duty. Call of Duty was just kind of like one of like the first big first-person shooters that I was introduced, as well as Halo, um, which was a 2017 finalist. I don't think it was indicted, but or like I don't think it was it was put in the Hall of Fame, but you know. Um, so, yeah, um, wait, hold on, named, what is it, against, oh, okay, okay, um, and then we have Dance Dance Revolution, Konami's 1998 game spread from Japanese arcades, including to a home version for the Sony PlayStation, so if you don't know Dance Dance Revolution, then you're, you've lived on a rock, but Dance Dance Revolution is the, uh, was one of the first, like, physical at-home games that you could play, you know, you got your dance pad, it gave you arrows to do up, down, left, right, and it just played, like, these, like, EDM dance fucking, just upbeat-ass disco songs in the best way to dis describe it, I know that was a bunch of ad or adjectives all in one sentence, but, yeah, um, I so said Dance Dance Revolution, like I said, was originally made by Konami, um, but I played a lot of Dance Dance uh, of DDR, as the hip kids would say. But DD, I played a lot of DDR as a kid, especially up at the, like what was uh, Haunted Trails, and it was Adventure Trails, and it was uh, the Family Fun Center. Just it was tons of fun. I loved it. I had so many like fun times with it. And if I ever had the chance to like play a, a DDR game again, I probably would. Um, up next, we have Final Fantasy VII. Uh, the 1997 game introduced a 3D computer graphics and other upgrades to the popular franchise. The game sold more than 10 million units, making it the second most popular game of the Sony PlayStation and helped popularize the Japanese role-playing game or genre. Uh, Final Fantasy VII, I have a lot of memories of Final Fantasy 7. Final Fantasy is such a great game, and if you haven't played Final Fantasy 15, fucking play it. Oh my god, it's amazing. It just came out, or it's out on PC. Holy shit. Um, fun fact about Final Fantasy 15, um, I paid $2 for that game. I, mean, I think I've told this story before on the podcast, but for the new listeners, the new Audio Boom listeners, um, but, so, like, Final Fantasy 15, um, was a game, like, I liked Final Fantasy, um, but Final Fantasy XV uh, was something that I was just like, meh, if I get around to playing it. So, like, for Christmas uh, last year, I asked my, you know, you know, my parents are like, hey, just give us a list of shit that you want, and, you know, we'll we'll see what we we'll see what we get off of it. So I asked for three games. It was pretty simple. I was like, uh, well, I asked for four, Gears of War 4, because I, I didn't feel like buying it. I didn't want to buy <laughs> Gears of War 4. Um, but there was three games I also wanted that were, like, older games. Uh, it was, uh, what was it? Metal Gear Solid 5, Resident Evil 5, and Resident Evil 6. I never finished either Resident Evil 5 or 6. Um, but, uh, what was it? Metal Gear Solid 5, I wanted, I just wanted to play the Metal Gear Solid 5 game. Um, but, so, I got, uh, when I, on Christmas Day, I opened up, you know, the presents my parents got me, uh, and I opened it, and I saw all three games there. It was Final, or it was Metal Gear Solid 5, 
uh, Resident Evil 5 and Resident Evil 6. So I played a little bit of Metal Gear of MG5, uh, MGS5, and that was fun. Um, and then I would play a little bit of Resident Evil 5 uh, by myself, and then like I, Josh played it with me, and we got pretty decently far with it. Still haven't fucking finished it. Um, <laughs> so we played some of it, uh, and then I was like, you know what, I'm going to play some Resident Evil 6. So I opened up the case, there's Resident Evil 4. Now, I've played my, I've played tons of Resident Evil 6, or 4, now, there was Resident Evil 4 in the Resident Evil 6 case. So, and I've played tons of Resident Evil 4, like, I, like, it's an amazing game, uh, but at the same time, I'm just like, I've played enough of this, I don't really want to play this. So, like... I told my dad, and he's like, oh, okay, I'll just take care of it. I still have the receipt. Um, so I was like, cool, cool. So he goes up there, and then he calls me. Um, he's like, yeah, they don't have Resident Evil 6. Do you want a different game? Do you want me to pick you up a different game? I was like, I'll just come up there. He's like, okay. So I go up there, and I'm looking around. And uh, let, let me tell you, they had a two-for-one deal. Like, you buy two uh, buy two used games, uh, and you get one free. So... I didn't think that would apply to me since I'm exchanging a game. So, uh, so I, like, I'm looking around, I'm looking around, I didn't see anything else that I wanted. So, I was like, oh, they got, they got Final Fantasy 15. I'll buy it and I'll pay the difference. So, you know, I get it, they, they pay for, or they, the, does the exchange, but what he had to do is he had to return, technically return all three games and then recharge all three games. That's like just the way the receipt had to go. Um, so when doing that, it gave me the sale as well. So then the difference was only two dollars. So because they fucked up, I got Final Fantasy fifteen for only two dollars, and that's hilarious as shit to me. So that's Final Fantasy fifteen is awesome. I love it. Um, and then move like moving on to the rest of the games. That's just like a small little sidetrack story. We got Half Life. Um, is the next game that was a nominee. Um, after its creation by Valve slash Sierra Studios in 1998, the game added the ability to modify the game itself, providing countless replay possibilities. Half-Life, you know, have a G-Mod, um, or Gary's Mod, whatever. Half-Life, I've never played Half-Life, but it looks really fun, um, but I guess I've never played it. Um, then we have John Madden Football, the 1990 reboot by Electronic Arts EA, became a pop cultural phenomenon. Uh, that has sold more than a hundred million copies. That like Mad the Madden series by EA. Um, that's the original one was John Madden Football, so that's kind of cool. Uh, then we got King's Quest. Sierra Online co-founder Roberta Williams, um, in 1984, made her game a hit on a personal computer or PC with its unique visuals and irrelevant humor. Irrever- irreverent, irreverent, uh, <laughs> I can't say the word. <clears throat> Hu- humor. Uh, seven sequels have, po- have followed. So the King's Quest, you know, it's up to King's Quest Eight now. I think they they I think it was re- King's Quest Four or Five that got a remaster um, for the Xbox as a, like a Xbox exclusive. So that's pretty cool. Um, never played it, so can't really be like, yeah. And then Metroid 1990, Nintendo's 1986 game introduced the first playable human female character in a mainstream video game. Metroid holds a near and dear place to my heart. Uh, I remember playing Metroid Prime on the GameCube, and that was just fucking amazing. Well, I remember seeing my brother, and then when he wasn't there, I'd play it. Um, but yeah, Metroid is an amazing game. They're about to come out with Metroid Prime 4. Um for the Switch, like, sometime this year, probably, um, and then, uh, and then just came out with a new, with a new one for, well, a remake, uh, for the 3DS, which was Super Metroid, I want to say it was a remake of Super Metroid, um, which was awesome, I fucking loved that game, that game was awesome, the, the remake was amazing, uh, and then we have Minecraft also as a nominee, a top performer since its introduction in 2009, 2009, the game lets players in a worldwide online community uh, build uh, in a worldwide online community build elaborate structures from pixelated blocks Minecraft is cool I've played my I've put in my like hundred of hours into Minecraft um, it's cool like I don't play it anymore not really uh, it's just it's not fun to me anymore I've played so much of it and done so much I'm just like I don't really give a shit anymore um, and then this one blew my mind because I went over this list before um uh, before I read it off, obviously, before I decided, but this one blew my fucking mind. Miss Pac-Man, 
yes, that is a nominee this year. I'm surprised Miss Pac-Man is not in there. Um, Midway launched the follow-up uh, to the Pac-Man arcade game in 1981. It became one of the be- of the five best-selling uh, arcade games of all time. Like that still blows my mind that Miss Pac-Man is not in the Hall of Fame. Wow, what the fuck? Um, so the next one is Space War was created by the members of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology Model Train Club. Well, that's a mouthful. In 1962, on a mainframe mainframe computer, um, it's credited with uh, helping launch the uh, multi-billion dollar video game industry. Um, So that's, ah, dang, Space War? What? What is Space War? What the fuck? Holy shit. Oh my god. That is one. That is one of the original games. Holy shit! That's amazing. That's fucking cool as shit. Oh my god, that's awesome. Um, <clears throat> and then the next game is to, or the last game on this list is Tomb Raider, the 1996 game that uh, and its protagonist Laura Croft inspired a uh, the <laughs> inspired a movie of the same name, featuring Angelina Jolie. Wow, what a fucking description. Wow, you guys do your fucking research. You do a bunch of research on all the other fucking games, like King's Quest. Fucking, what? I mean, like, King's Quest is, like, an actually, like, well-known title. Final Fantasy, you did roll, you did a little bit of, you did some type of research on Final Fantasy fucking seven. But Tomb Raider, oh, it's also as a movie. <sighs> Like there's so much stuff. Like in my personal opinion, in in my personal opinion, I think Final Fantasy VII should get it. Final Fantasy VII or Miss Pac-Man. Like, um, and uh, I have a, actually I have a couple. Like I'd honestly say should be on there. Like Asteroids. Like that's a fucking classic. I'm again, cla- like Asteroids, Miss Pac-Man, and John Madden. Or the John Madden football. Like I really feel like those are like the three that should be in there. Like. One, Miss Pac-Man is a classic. Like, when you think Pac-Man, you also think Miss Pac-Man. And then if you think, like, Matt, or, like, if you are a big Madden fan, the big EA Madden fan, um, then obviously, you know, you know Madden football if you're, like, part of the older people, like, the older generations. Like, I know about John Madden, the John Madden football game, the original one, um, but that's just because, like, I'm really fucking... Um, like, I'm very knowledgeable on video games. Like, I'm a hardcore gamer. I know my shit. Um, but at the same time, like, that's, that blows my mind. It's like, what? Um, and then, like, and then, like, Final Fantasy VII. Like, come on. Come on. That is a fucking classic of a video game. Like, that is, like, like when people think Final Fantasy VII, they think Cloud, Sephiroth. They think Mother. They think uh, that entire crew of people from Final Fantasy VII. They, they imagine the train scene. Like, why is Final Fantasy VII just a nominee? And then Asteroids, come on. Really? Really? Asteroids is just now getting a fucking nominee? Like, mmm. Mmm. But yeah, that's the finalist. I mean, like, um, if you want to pick something from, like, this day and age, I guess you can pick, like, Half- like Half-Life or Tomb Raider, because Tomb Raider is actually starting to become big and popular again, um, as well as Metroid. Metroid's following is insane. I like Metroid, but I'm not, like, a huge, huge fan of Metroid. It just it holds a place in my heart. Metroid Prime for the GameCube. Ooh, that game is fucking fire. Um, but Metroid is, is amazing. Metroid is awesome. Like, the, But the following and the fan base for it is insane. They're just like, Metroid is amazing. Like, if you ask a Metroid fan what's their best part, of, like what's their favorite part about Metroid, they'll probably tell you. Like, I couldn't tell you my favorite part. Pretty sure some of them good, but a majority of them. But the Metroid following is insane and crazy. At EA, uh, the Nintendo E3, not EA, the Nintendo E3... Uh, Expo last year when they showed off Metroid Prime 4, you should have fucking heard that crowd. I watched it. I had the day off of work, so I was able to watch it, but that was insane. That fucking shit. You're just like, like that crowd was like, what? And I'm just like, yeah, that's that's the Metroid like following. But Space War, like out of all these games, Space War, that is like one of the original games. Why is it not a... Why, why is it not the fucking start of the fucking Hall of Fame? Blows my mind. Like, this... 
blows my mind. Holy shit. But that is the fucking final. Let me know what you guys think. If you're watching this on YouTube, let me know in the comments below. If you're listening to it on Audio Boom, Google Play, or... Uh, yeah, Audio Boom, Google Play, or iTunes. Go ahead and let me know. Hit me up on Twitter, at OSDLS12. Let me know your what you think should win. And let me know... Let me know. Yeah, just let me know what you want to win. Like what you think would win, um, and should be in there. And if you don't see one on there, which one do you? What game do you think should be in there already? Uh, but the 27 member of an international selection of the advisory committee, based on the people that will, um, and yeah, the this is they're gonna put their vote for the winner, uh, to cast that to cast their ballots for the winner. And then three of the games will, uh, the three games that will receive the most public votes from the new players' choice voting will count as another ballot. So basically, there's a, um, there's a players' choice version. So, and that's also going to count as one ballot. So basically, we'll make it 28, which is, you think it would be like 26 people, and then, like, like, man, wow, that's weird. That's weird. Um, so, but yeah, and then also, to sum this up, uh, to end off this episode with my new ending segment is the game of the week, and the game of the week is Monster Hunter World. Like, I know I've talked about a lot when it first came out on the podcast, but I've just been, like, I took a small break from it, and now I'm jumping back in, so now that's the game I'm, like, hardcore playing. Trust me, Monster Hunter, I can talk hours about Monster Hunter. It's amazing. It is one of my favorite franchises. Like, it is in my top three franchises. Um, so, yeah, it's, it, it's awesome. That's my game of the week. I've been playing the shit out of it. If you want to, if you want to play with me on YouTube, or on there, and it's not that, um, then, uh, go ahead and, you know, hit me up on the Xbox, um, uh, with, uh, RD1K12, um, you can play with me on there, because I'm on there quite frequently with Monster Hunter. Um, and I stream it sometimes, too. Just go to OS Duelist on uh, Twitch, and I stream Monster I've been streaming a little bit of Monster Hunter on there, and I've been streamed just random streams here and there. So, if you want to know, follow me on there. You'll get the notifications, my dudes. Um, but that is it for this week's episode of The Voidcast. And if you're an Audio Boom iTunes or Google Play listener, if you're an Audio Boom listener, um, then... Um, you will get your bonus episode at the end of the month, which is Saturday, so stay tuned for that. But thank you guys for listening and or watching to this week's episode of The Voidcast. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Um, if you're a YouTube listener, don't forget to do that. Don't forget to share it. Tell people about it. That's the best thing you can do for me, guys, is to just say, like, hey, I heard this amazing p- p- uh, podcast. You should definitely listen to it, and it's amazing. But thank you guys, and have a wonderful, beautiful night, day thing, or whatever.